Hi guys, Nick from Hi-Fi Collective here. Today we are going to be installing the Alma Audio Plus remote to one of these babies. So this is um, a steps attenuator using it's a 10k shunt version. So the way it works is you have a motor part that sits on the back and with the controller board. So we pro you have to program it, so we use the Apple remote with it. But effectively the, the um, Alma Audio Plus can be used with a two pole, 24 way, four pole, 24 way, one pole, 24 way, one pole, 47 way, two pole, and four pole, 47 way. So let's see what we've got here. So that's all finished, that's all been tested. It doesn't have the load resistor fitted as yet, but that's by the by. This is the instructions for it. This is what you get in your bag. Um, there's, there's your Apple remote. We also sell the, a wall wart power supply. This requires at least a one amp 12 volt DC supply. So we've got one here. I mean that's for something else but that, that does the job nicely. So here we have the motor. board here um, which we have to wire certain parts to it so that's the board and then what we have here is various screws and things that we need to fit on So first thing you can see here how it works. So here's all the parts. Um, and there's the part that you assemble and then that connects to the actual switch like that. Um, so first thing we're gonna do is connect up the, the actual motor to the, the remote control board. So it's, it goes like that. Um, these wires here are obviously controlling how the motor works. So they are wired up. It's basically there. It says stepper motor. That's the connections there. It tells you the colors. So you really want to wire it so it's like that. Okay, so just bear that in mind. Get your um, standoffs, and then there's two threaded pins here. So it sits so diagonal where the screws are. So it's it's going like that. So effectively, it's those two you are connecting to these two corners. So they. Basically, come up through the top like that, and that goes all the way through from there, like that. Which, that's the thing is today, excuse me, today, you want to do a bit, get more of a thread inside the stand off so and then you do the other side sits obviously like that but there's a component that sits over the top of there so we fitted the adapter to the shaft of the motor we fitted your standoffs here so 
You can see here that this is like a D shape, which correlates to the spindle here is kind of a D shape. So that's got to fit through that hole, which it does there. And then remember we need it to be the wire needs to come that way. So it's like that. Because these have to be wired to these junctures here, the stepper motor. So they're like that. Two screws. Put those there. And there. Like so. And then we have to take off these screws here because that's where it marries onto like that. Take the screws off here. Oops. Take the screw off there. It will stay in place, the board. So it's going to go like that. But you've got your two screws. Which go in there and there. It's quite tricky, this fiddly. So let's use this device so I can keep that still. Phillips, I need to know Phillips. So these will go through the holes. Let's just focus on one at a time. Let's go through there. actually going through So that's kind of the mechanics of it all. So we're going to get some soldering done now. First of all, we're going to wire the stepper motor to the control board. So there's four different wires here. Oh my Lord, how do, have they tied these up? Right, so, just to keep it neat, I'm going to run them down the side like that. So I'll snip it out there. Yep. Can give me another twist? Keep them together. Strip the ends. This wire should strip quite easily with wire strippers. Yep, nicely. Give them one a bit of a twist. And then looking at your diagram on your data sheet. So red is the first one. Now I'm going to be soldering from this side. So 
so it might be worth tinning all these actually, which I'll do. Quickly. Could use a finer tip with this kind of work, but I generally always use a bigger one. Over there, red. What's next? Blue. Cool. Well, I'm just going to leave it like that because I will strap it down, but effectively you need to have two joins. These two pins here, this one and this one, are your, that one is your positive 12 volts DC input and that one is your zero volts. So I'm just looking at how much we've got left, I think oh, I'm going to use a different wire. We can use this for the infrared sensor. So I've got some other wire here. So we're just going to use this for the supply. So get rid of the ends. Snippety step. So we're going to use red for the plus, there, and then the black for the ground. Let's do one at a time. twist and we're going to put a um, socket at the other end so you can just plug your wall wall into it. That's it. So this is the socket we're going to wire up for your power supply. If you look here, this is one I made earlier with something else. This one is your positive, there's your positive, and there's your negative. Positive, negative.
So that is your power sorted. Let's check. Yeah, yeah. So the last thing remaining is your sensor, radio frequency sensor. You can see here that that's obviously where it picks up the radio frequencies coming in, infrared frequency. So with this, you can fit it to the board, but generally people have these situated kind of so it can be, can receive a signal. So you would really generally leave it on the board. So we're going to put extenders on using the excess wire coming that came off the, the stepper control. Okay. Right. So I'm now wiring up the infrared sensor to three different coloured pieces of wire. Um, just exposing a bit of the ends. And then Tim, solder remain. Right, so green is going to be earth. Oops. Blue is going to be I R N. Wow. Out wow, really. The output of this sensor goes through this one. And then the red is going to be the, the juice, the five volts. Right. Well, before I pop this out, I'm just going to put some tie wraps around the wire. Snippity snippity. Be very careful when you put this in the eyes. You don't want to crush it. Too much. Alright, so the middle one was ground, which we're going to use green. I'm just going to put little hooks in the end here. Just so there's a bit of a kind of physical contact, not just a soldered one. So, that one's going to be earth. Um, red's going to be five volts. And then the other one is the I R out. Right. Just solder them up quickly. Just have a little break between each one. You don't want to fry the device. Probably worrying that why they're quite close together these wires, but we're going to put some heat heat shrink on them. Cool, all we'll sorted up. Heat shrink. Done. Last. Get 
more than similar length. Anyway. So these ends are going to go into the board. So strip them, tin them, solder them in. twist. So, looking at the diagram, I'm going to be soldering these three. One, two, three there. So if you remember, green was earth, so that's the middle one. The other one was from the sensor. So that's all wired in as well. So this should be a lot long enough length for whoever's using it to put it somewhere so it can be received. You can receive the signal from the remote control. That's going to snip the excess wires. That are underneath, you can see them there. Also, on the other side. Put it up to make sure it's cool. I don't touch it yet, yeah, it's all good. It went fine. <coughs> so now, there's one more piece, we have to put the grub screw in the shaft. Now the, the Allen key is not provided with the kit. So you basically need to have a, it's a 2.5 version, 2.5 mil. So there you go. So when the motor moves, connects through to the shaft and moves all the connections that go on these two boards. Right. Go quicker, but so there's that's full volume. Then down to the other, down the other way. 